shot. Come on. Yeah! it. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 2023 Shawnee Classic. Mike Flanagan along with Tom Hess here this evening. And we are proud to bring you the Stepladder Finals here tonight. We've got four very exceptional players that have battled through this bare oil pattern here this week here in Shawnee, Tom. Yeah, been an interesting week so far, to say the least. We've seen lots of high scores. We've seen some low scores. Um, got uh, a first-time guy making his show. All the way from the PTQ, Joe Grondon. He's going to be in our first match, taking on DJ Archer. DJ looking for title number three. Winner's going to move on to face Dom Barrett. Um, our top two guys tonight, Dom Barrett, EJ Tackett, definitely uh, the more experienced people in this stepladder, as we've said. Dom with 10, EJ with 17 titles. Yeah, and of course, both players also have uh, completed the Triple Crown already in, the, in their young careers. Tonight's uh, telecast, we've, we've got a little bit of variety in age. We've got uh, Joe Grondon. He's 24 years old. He's the youngest uh, that we have out there tonight. But we've got also a EJ Tackett, who is 30. Don Barrett, who's 37 years old. And can you believe DJ Archer is the oldest guy on the show at 42? Wow, DJ, the old man on the show tonight at 42. You know, to add, uh, Don Barrett has made a show in here in this building before. Dom has never won here. Um, Dom's made three shows. EJ has made three shows here. EJ winning the 2017 Tournament of Champions uh, right here at Fire Lake Lanes. The uh, finals were held over at the arena. Uh, defeated Tommy Jones to get that 2017 TOC title. Players are just finishing up practice. We'll, uh, we'll go out to the lanes to watch the end of practice here. Get a look at DJ Archer. This oil pattern, the bear, 41 feet in length. 26 milliliters of oil out there on the lanes. A lot of uh, friction in the middle part of the lane, less friction outside. The ratio is 2.1 to 1. It is a bit asymmetric. Basically play the track and move inside. Saw a lot of score early, but as the tournament went on later in the stages, going pair to pair to the two different bays, we saw some low scores down the stretch. As a matter of fact, DJ Archer was second overall, pulled 149 and still made the show. They got really tricky at the end, Tom. Yes, they did. Uh, that was the theme of the week. Uh, scores were coming down on certain pairs, let's say. Um, DJ told me when I was talking to him, one of his keys to the week, uh, he ended the first day bowling 240, 270, said he got comfortable, let him feel like he had a chance and he was able to play his A game this week and he parlayed that into the show. John Weber making a few announcements here. Number four seed DJ Archer from Simpsonville, South Carolina. He's the owner of two PBA Tour titles. He averaged 222.57 to make the show here tonight. Joe Grondon looking for his first title. He's gonna bowl all the PTQs this year. If he could win tonight, it'll put him in every single field the rest of the season and into the Tournament of Champions. He averaged 225.04, making it in here. 24 years old. He went to Wichita State University. And, of course, Don Barrett, owner of 10 titles, three majors, including the Triple Crown from Great Bentley, England, our number two seed tonight, 37 years old, 225 average. But E.J. Tackett is the storyline, as you mentioned, Tom, from Bluffton, Indiana. He already won the U.S. Open this year. 17 titles, completed the Triple Crown this year, only 30 years old. Of course, he was the PBA Player of the Year back in 2016, and he absolutely lapped the field here this week. Yeah, lapped the field. Uh, Led the field by 555 pins. Say that again. 500 and 50, 55 pins, 45 pins. 545 pins. So he didn't even have to bowl the last game, but he did. And there are your standings right there. Look at that, EJ Tackett, 240.71, 10 and two in match play. 
want to give a shout out to Stu Williams. He, he was the class of the field going into match play, had a rough go of it. You see the average there. He actually averaged high enough to potentially make this show, but that bad record in match play, two and 10, ends up finishing ninth. Sean Lavery Spar went 425 over for a qualifying block. This week just misses the show by six pins. Yeah, that the 24-man uh, round robin format, uh, this week it was 12. Guys, so winning those matches really mattered. Uh, as you can see, the 30 bonus pins that uh, beating that guy you bowled, uh, huge part of the format this week. Joe had lane choice. Joe has decided that he is going to have DJ start the match. DJ basically used two balls this week. He said all of his uh, scores were with the Eternity in the Phase 2. DJ Archer gets comfortable when he can move left, throw it slow, and open up the oil pattern. It's his A game, and that's what we're going to see tonight here from DJ. Opening yeah. shot. I would say the DJ would say that was not uh, his best effort. Uh, leaving the 3-6 there. DJ decided he's going with the phase two. He did tell me that he was very comfortable on the fresh. So just uh, got to fight through the nerves of being on the show for the first time in a while here. All right, covers the spare. No harm, no foul. Got to give the advantage to Archer here, I guess, in the first match, huh, Tom, with the experience and two titles under his belt? The experience, definitely got to give the advantage to DJ there. Uh, Joe, though, he's been performing all week. Average 225.04, as you said. See how, uh, see how he handles the nerves here with his opening shot. Joe from San Pedro, California. Oh, good break there. <clears throat> we saw Joe get into the inside part of the lane. We talked about how DJ likes to play inside. Joe loves to play in the middle of the lane. Yeah, both of these guys are going to be able to play their A game tonight. So it's just going to be ever whoever gets lined up and uh, gets comfortable and makes good shots and execute is going to come out uh, on top here in this first match. One interesting tidbit here about Joe being from San Pedro and his parents being in the military. You see on his jersey there, the Korean Bell of Friendship means a great deal to him from his hometown. It's a uh, very massive and intricately decorated bell and pavilion. It was actually donated in 1976 to the people of Los Angeles by the people of the Republic of Korea to celebrate the bicentennial of the U.S. independence, honor veterans of the Korean War, and to consolidate traditional friendship between two countries. Yeah, and he wanted to give a shout out to Sean, Caitlin, and Patrick as uh, his friends. That was a gift. That jersey was a gift from them, and he wanted to make sure we got them a shout out. Great second <clears throat> shot there from Joe. Yeah, really good shot there. Stayed down and through it. We've seen as we've been watching Joe, uh, he's got actually a couple of different variations of his release. So, you know, when he's looks really comfortable when he stays down, but we've seen him some of them. Uh, popping up to try to get a little bit more on it. A little bit of a distraction in the back. This place has filled up nicely here. DJ. That was the eternity on the right lane. I wonder if DJ's strategy is to uh, throw a different ball on each lane here. We've been talking about it all week. How down here on this low side, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, uh, the right lanes have been playing tighter on all three of those pairs. And of course, our championship match tonight is here on five and six. That's a great shot by DJ. He's getting the ball about two boards right of the rangefinder down lane. We've been talking about the rangefinder, the tracer, the dark board on the right side of the lane. It's at the 10 board. The rule of 31 and lane patterns, this one being 41 feet in length, you subtract 10 or you subtract 31, which puts you at 10 at the end of the pattern. That's where the guys want to have the ball exit the pattern. DJ did stay with the eternity here in frame three. 
The Eternity uh, is a symmetric ball, or an asymmetric ball with the Phase 2 being a symmetric ball. Um, I think he made that change because the Phase 2 came off of it a little too quick in the first frame. Yeah, DJ, when he lets go of that and steps out to the right, uh, he's comfortable. He's making good shots. He's playing his A game. Joe here in the third looking to throw a double and stay even. Oh. Two, four, ten. Looked a little quick. As we look at a replay here, let's see if he gets this ball a little too far right down lane. Just, yeah, that's... That was over about seven. I think Joe's trying to play closer to nine ten. Oh, I have to remember that bit of an unfortunate break there, chopping the two straight back off the four. This match comes down to a count war. That could be big. Players tonight have a nice prize fund that they are going for here this evening. Yeah, the winner of this event is going to take home $25,000. Oh, Joe doesn't like that one. Oh, back to back two tens. Looks a little quick. Yeah. Runner up. $16,000. Yeah, that one's that one's a little further right as well. Third place tonight gets twelve thousand and fourth place ten thousand dollars. That is your prize fund this evening. It's got a oh. We're sitting off to the side. That looked like it had a chance all the way down. So back to back open frames for Grondon. Yeah, he's back here talking to his ball rep, Dino Castillo. He gave a big shout-out to Dino and Mike Wolf uh, for helping him get through this week. Great answer from DJ there. Yeah, and I think the key between the two players here is they're both playing their A games, but DJ's got the soft hand, the soft touch. He's slow hooking the lane. And Joe, I think, is a little amped up here tonight from, from what we've seen through all match play and through qualifying. Joe's throwing a little bit harder than he was. You look at DJ, he's shortening the oil pattern by throwing it slow, which means the ball has more time to hook back to the head pin. Yeah, and the other difference, DJ's giving it a little bit of a loft, getting it out on the lane so it slows down a little bit more when it lands. Um, and I agree 100% with your statement about Joe. He told me when I was talking to him uh, earlier today that one of his keys was the slow ball speed and the soft hand. Uh, he said he was trying to replica replicate Tomas. DJ, nice break there. Getting the 10 out, leaving just the 2-4. On the fresh, especially when you're playing that deep, you got to make sure you give that ball enough time to hook. Still yeah. massively slow ball speed, but you see it's a little right down <clears> lane. That one was a little right down lane. You can see DJ's getting that ball out on the lane about 8 to 10 feet. Good spare. Tom, there's a lot of history here in Shawnee coming here to Fire Lake, of course. Yeah, there's been a couple of Summer Series events here. In 2014, uh, there was four events held here in a week. Sean Rash won on the Wolf pattern. Uh, Bill O'Neill won on the Badger pattern. And then on the Bear pattern, Ronnie Russell won uh, before Belmo won the Oklahoma Open for the week. Joe here. In the fifth frame, looks like a ball, a change. ball change, and that one was definitely slower, and uh, read the pattern a little quicker. Then we came back in 2015, where Kyle Troop won on the Wolf pattern. Ronnie Russell went from winning on the Bear to winning on the Badger, and uh, Tommy Jones then won on the Bear, before Bill O'Neill won the Oklahoma Open. 
We've also had two other that were just Oklahoma Opens. Good cover there by Joe on the 10. Uh, Marshall Kent got one of his tour titles in 2017, winning the Oklahoma Open. And Jacob Buttruff won the Oklahoma Open in 2019. Uh, Fire Lake has also hosted two TOCs, as I mentioned e earlier. EJ winning here in 2017 and Jesper winning in 2016. Both of those finals were held at the arena right across the parking lot. Joe. Joe has not gotten comfortable here tonight on our championship pair, that is for sure. No, and he's figuring out just how fast these championship matches go. You get out there and they just it just it it's so quick. All of a sudden, you know, he's only been out there for ten minutes and he's in the sixth frame already and pretty much really struggling. And and Joe did not struggle. He 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 turned it on today. He got himself to the show. He got him in the, in a great position. Was absolutely on fire. Was was just about outbold everybody in the first round of match play today. And he's been in the show most of the day. See, Stunned. and that one to me was a little bit harder than the one that went high mm -hmm. on the right lane. So he's probably just fighting some emotions. DJ in the driver's seat. Yeah. I think you're going to see all four guys play right in that area. EJ might even be a little bit further left. EJ going to be the highest rev rate on our show tonight. And uh, he's looked comfortable all day long. So he'll probably just get a little bit further left than them and just keep doing what he's been doing all day. See DJ looking down, he's he's counting boards. He's gonna make a little adjustment here, I think, off of his last shot. Came in a little bit light on this lane, giving it time to hook. Light again. Similar reaction on the left lane. Yep, got, got the break, getting the 10 out. Yeah, out here, you've gotta move every four or five frames. You can't just stay in the same spot. All right, nice cover, DJ Archer there in the seventh frame. Yeah, DJ was telling me when I was talking to him before this step ladder that he didn't really bowl all that many big games. You know, he had the 270 to end block one. Then he thinks his next highest score was, ironically, the game before the position round game. He bowled 258 on the pair that he turned around and bowled 149 on the next game. Uh, he was just really consistent and got comfortable all week and just kept plugging along. Joe with yet another ball change. Yeah, it looks like he's moved even further left, trying to open up this oil pattern, and that ball's reading the lane just a bit too early. There's a lot on the line tonight for Joe. Yeah, with a win tonight, uh, Joe would have been out of the PTQs, you know, fulfilling a lifelong dream, I'm sure, becoming a PBA Tour champion and making the rest of this year a little bit easier, uh, basically eliminating one day of qualifying for him and putting him right into every event. See the other finishers here this week are scrolling across the bottom of your screen. Yeah, that was back to the ball that Joe started with there. Best Joe can finish at at this point is 187. DJ going at a 218 pace. Once DJ gets to that number, you may see him even search around and try some different bowling balls, but there's a 710 now in the eighth. 
that's going to tighten things up just a little bit, but not. DJ's not in a whole lot of trouble unless he uh, happens to have a bad break like that again. And Joe can then figure out how to throw a four-bagger. Shot looked a little firmer. Might have been a little right as well. DJ did not like it off his hand. Wonder if that could have possibly been the result of a little bit of a bad rack. We've seen players uh, re-racking on lane six quite a bit this week. Notice DJ kind of matches the masking units here. Of course, uh, here at Fire Lake and here in Shawnee, it's the home of the Southwest Region Hall of Fame. You see all the inductees are out on the masking units across the bowling center here. Yeah, what we're looking at there, that it's not really legible, but uh, that's the first two classes. They uh, came up with the Southwest Region Hall of Fame in 2014. And uh, Henry Gonzalez, Mike Scroggins, Cecil Cadell, and Dick Atkinson were the first four inductees. Joe not taking a whole lot of time now. How about that ball getting back from really far down the lane? Yeah, that was the ball he started with. Uh, I think Joe might have pressed just a little bit and started searching for bowling balls instead of just, you know, relaxing and, and making some good shots like he did. Look at that. That's a beautiful shot. Look at that form. Nice down through it all the way through. He's using almost every board on the lane. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of a rough game here for Joe, but still an awesome week. Joe Grandin going to come home fourth here in Shawnee. T.J. Archer is going to move on to take on our number two seed, Dom Barrett. Other yeah. Hall of Famers here in the Southwest region, Sean Swanson, Chris Barnes, Nathan Bohr, Gary Mogard, Ed Autry. That's the class from 2015-2016. Chris Skillings, Rick Lawrence, Wes Mallott. 2017, Mark Scroggins. Joe Ellison. All right, Joe. Nice yeah. way to finish there. 2018 inducted Chris Warren and Jimbo Evans. 2020, Pete McCordick and our most recent inductee in 2022, Tyler Jensen. All right, DJ's got a little bit of a free run here. 10th frame, see if he wants to make any adjustments. That's a pretty good shot there after the 7-10. That one did not get quite as far right. Looked like he was nice and soft with the speed, so DJ can finish with 225. And here we go. DJ's making a ball change on this one. Going to try to gather a little information. Went to that phase two. As I said earlier, the eternity and the phase two were pretty much the two balls DJ used all week. Speed control is going to be huge tonight for DJ if he's going to keep running up the ladder. Cannot get quick with it. Looks like he's got a couple different looks with a couple of different bowling balls now. Yeah, I would agree. That loft is going to be key for him to, uh, you know, he's taking that first eight to ten feet out of play uh, by lofting over it. So I think that's going to give him a little bit of an advantage. be interesting to see if Dom goes with that strategy here in our next match. You see Dino Castillo and Mike Wolf, Joe's ball reps out here, this week uh, representing the brands of Brunswick, 
We've also got out here from uh, Storm Products Incorporated, we've got Sean Ryan and Eric Kraus. And for Motive, you see Brett Spangler down there. Wesley Lowe doing some social media work as well. He competed this week. There's Sean Ryan stepping through scene, and there is uh, Brett Spangler going to take a look at some practice shots here by our number one seed, E.J. Tackett. We're Thanks. using lanes five and six here at Fire Lake. 24-lane bowling center. Yeah, E.J.'s going to get to come in and take some practice shots, and then Dom's going to get eight shots uh, before he decides the match. We'll stay here and watch EJ's practice shots. I'd like to take a minute to say hello to everyone in our chat room here this evening. We've got an interactive community here on Bowl TV. If you're watching this later on a uploaded version of this uh, on YouTube, we would invite you to come watch the competition live on Bowl TV. Head over to BowlTV.com where you can watch all the action live. Those of you that are watching live tonight, thank you for being subscribers. And thank you for interacting in the chat and focusing on the competition at hand out on the lanes and celebrating the best bowlers in the world and the competition that we're seeing here tonight. There is EJ. Seemed like every time EJ was bowling, he was bowling 250 this week. Yeah, he bowled a lot of them. That uh, earlier I was looking through, and unfortunately the way that the names were put in this week and everything, our, our lane talk stats didn't, didn't update completely for everybody. But uh, EJ, that last block struck 72% of the time. That's, that's pretty solid. We almost had a dream matchup here tonight as well. Zach Tackett just missing the show. EJ's brother, 829, just missed the show by 13 pins. Zach and EJ actually bowled against each other, Tom, in match play. Yeah, what a, what a thriller that was as EJ defeats Zach 279 to 275. Dom Barrett taking his practice shots. Dom's got a couple different tricks. He can get in and hook it. He can go a little bit more direct than the other players. It'll be interesting to see what Dom decides for his plan of attack here. Dom really got a lot of his score in the second round of qualifying here. Got off to a slow start. Went from 39th to 5th, plus 365 for his second eight-game block. Yeah, Dom said that uh, his big keys for this week were, were his physical game. He was working on uh, keeping his elbow in. And then he said he's bolted so many times in here that he knew the scores were really going to come down at the end of the block. So he was just trying to stay patient and just keep getting as many pins as he can and, and, and not really panic. You know, if a, if a bad game happened because he felt that everybody was going to bowl a bad game at some point. And he was pretty much right, except for one guy. EJ never really bowled a bad game. The balls that Dom used predominantly throughout the week were the Black Widow 2.0 Hybrid, the One Remix, and then uh, they drilled a radical Bigfoot uh, in between blocks today. Uh, he used that in the second block today. This will be the fourth show for Dom Barrett here at Fire Lake Lanes. So he's obviously really comfortable in this building. You know who makes it all happen here at Fire Lake, don't you, Tom? Yeah, Chelsea Combs. She's the GM. She makes everything happen. 
the Hall of Famer out there on the Massey unit's done a lot for bowling here as well. Yeah, Chris Skillings. Yep. Shout out to both of those individuals and the entire staff here. So from watching practice here, putting on our analytical hats, we saw DJ 710 on the right lane. And to me, it either looked like he was a little right of target down lane or a little quick. We saw Grondon having a little bit of issues with his speed control. Never got comfortable. And we've seen Dom now coming in a little behind the head pin. There are those masking units. Got a great shot of the masking units there. Dom comes in high there, so it's going to be it's going to be critical for Dom to not throw it. If he's going to open up the lane, he's going to have to keep his speed soft and get his feet far enough to the left. Yeah, that's a great assessment. I agree with that. Um, that's definitely what DJ is going to be doing, and I I think Dom and DJ are going to kind of try to do the same thing. Dom's ball speed. At least through his practice shots, it looks like he's going to be throwing it just a little bit harder than DJ. Ladies and gentlemen, we're ready for the semifinal match here at Fire Lake. Don Barrett coming on. He is from England. He's won 10 times on the PBA Tour. His last win was the 2022 Tournament of Champions, which completed the Triple Crown for Don. He's a three-time World Bowling Writers Bowler of the Year. Don Barrett, everybody. DJ Archer, let's give him a nice one. That's good. All right, here we go, semifinal match. DJ Archer bringing the momentum with him, bowled 225 the first game. Slow hooking it, curving it. Dominic Barrett, we will see what his path to the pocket will be. DJ starting on the left lane. He will finish on the right lane. That's a pretty good shot from DJ. DJ looks very comfortable tonight. Crossing over about 20. That ball getting out to about seven. His slower ball speed's allowing him to get the ball a little bit further to the right. Dom going with the one remix. Dom's playing same spot at the arrows as DJ is but Dom's not getting the ball as far to the right and Dom's throwing it just a little bit firmer keeping it a little bit more online so we take a look here not going to quite be able to see it but that ball was right over the tracer down lane so his break points about three boards inside of DJ's Dom is from Great Bentley England makes the trip over on the other side of the pond every year to bowl the PBA Tour Full time. Ooh. Yeah, I think that one was just a little bit further right than the shot on the right lane. Yeah, if you're Dom right now, you're loving your look on this pair. I mean, both shots really good. Right over about 20. That one's about to eight. Dom, an excellent spare shooter. Tom did not bowl well in the first two events this year. Making the step ladder tonight is going to give him a lot of confidence going into the rest of the tour season. Yeah, third event of the year. A couple events to uh, get back into the swing of things. And now uh, I expect Dom to be the great Dom that he is. DJ. Oh. Oh. That was inside a target yeah, down didn't, lane. Didn't get that one as far right. That was a targeting error. He was he was left to target there. Leaves the three four seven ten. We've seen some weird splits here. Yeah, see that one right over the the down lane range finder. Uh, the shot that struck. He was about three boards right of that. This is makeable though. We actually saw DJ on the Roth Holman double show where he bowled with Sean Maldonado, put on a 
a trick shot clinic on the right lane. I remember that show last year. He was he was picking splits like that. I remember that. Yeah, he made like three out of four. <laughs> I think they were they were all the <laughs> the so. three four or the oh, three seven yeah, combination some sort of three pin combo. Yeah. yeah. DJ can regroup here. Long way to go in this match. Moved a little further left. Yeah, you can see him kind of give the gesture that the trying guys to help. do out here when they're trying to help it. And yep. he got over the top of it. Trust is a must. you got to let that ball get out to the right, float out to the right. Grabbed a handful of it there and rolling right over the range finder. He's got to be a little bit right of the range finder with that soft speed. You can amp up the speed a little bit and hit right there, and you'll still you'll get right back to the strike pocket. But DJ likes to be real soft with it. No. Oh. Chops the spare. DJ Archer with an open frame. Again in the third. Yeah, if you're Don Barry, you like to see that. Tom stepped up and been in the pocket both shots. White Swisher. 25 pin lead for Barrett now in the third. That one not quite as flush, so maybe Dom's got a little bit of room. The light hit seemed to carry very well this week. Yeah, that's... Just a little bit further right than the shot there in the second frame. Shot in the second frame got back, leaving just the 10. That one didn't get, come around the corner. Leaves the 210. Yeah, you see, see it just push yeah. right. It just yeah. hydroplanes right through it. Leaves the 210. And that's kind of what we've seen on this on this oil pattern. This also is one of the toughest pairs in the house, the players have said. And they start to get tricky down lane at your break point. You got to get it to your spot the right way. Otherwise, you can go high or light. And we've seen both players go. DJ's going high. Dom goes light in the fourth. Dom perfect on the right lane. Dom will finish on the left lane. Good call by Dom. Excuse me, Dom will finish on his on his bad lane, actually. Oh, oh that's a second 7-10 we've seen from, uh, from, from DJ. Yeah, both of them on that right lane. And that was after coming in high, so that was a good adjustment. All right. Very unfortunate break for DJ. Still a lot of bowling left. 24 pin match. Regroup. DJ can throw a strike. It puts a small amount of pressure back on Dom as uh, through four frames, neither one of our competitors have thrown a double. Moved even further left, got that one right, and that one didn't come back. Yeah, when the lanes go away, they really go away. I mean, we, we're, this is mirroring what DJ did in the in the position round game where he bowled 149. 
Yeah, game 11 on the same parry, ball 258. Then he has to bowl the position around on that same pair. You got a great, you think you think things are great. Bowls 149 and now four consecutive opens. We'll see uh, Dom. Two strikes here on the right lane. See if we can just keep doing the. Same thing he's been doing. Great shot out of Dom. Took advantage of the fact that after he opened, uh, DJ didn't put any pressure on him, came back and... Another really good shot here out of Dom. See what kind of adjustment Dom makes here on the left lane. I think he needs to get his ball to hook just a little bit quicker. Whether he wants to to tighten up or, or throw it just a little bit slower here on the left lane. Yeah, the score has come when the guys have moved in and opened up the lane pattern, which is kind of opposite of, of, of what you're taught. Normally you tighten up your angles. Well, that's way oh, that's left. that's way left. He definitely made a move there and just didn't like his execution. You could see that he uh, was further left with his feet there on the approach. Fortunate break, leaving just the 6-10. Yeah, Dom's definitely not happy with his execution there. DJ's max score, 202. Dom pacing 188. DJ making the ball change here. Going with the phase two. Oh, oh, what a great shot and an awful break. Take a look here. Going to be able to see that ball right over the tracer. Really good shot. Just an unfortunate break leaving the seven pin. what happens when you throw a round ball at round objects. DJ checking the scoreboard himself there. So if he strikes here, he'll have 72 in the sixth. At 192 max now for e DJ. Dom, what a strike would be 108 in the sixth. Yeah, Dom is pacing 188. DJ kind of hopped there like he might have stuck a little bit. Still a pretty good shot. Oh, he's back in the strike pocket. Yep. That ball came back from a long ways away. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think DJ was happy with uh, his execution on that shot. I think he'll take the 10 pin. Got to go make it. Dom hasn't done anything to pull away yet. DJ with four opens in a row there, the second through the fifth frame. Started with a strike, back in the strike pocket, nine spare, nine spare. It's after a 7 10. Dom looking to stay perfect here on the right lane. Goes a little bit high, gets fortunate to trip the four out of the 4 9. So it'll be a 36-pin lead with a spare here for Dom Barrett heading into the eighth. What would you see here, Tom? Might have just been a little bit left to target.
Dom with a 36 pin lead through this match. This could be a big shot for Dom's night right here. If he wants any, you know, looking like he's going to advance over DJ, but he's got to figure this lane out if he wants to have any chance to uh, defeat EJ. Another, another behind the head pin, 10 pin. Yeah, that was a great shot there by, by Dom. I really liked that one there. It looked like he got good extension through the ball. His release was very good. Look at that. Crossing just inside of the 20th board, about a board or two right of the rangefinder down lane. Yeah, but I think if he tightens that up just a little bit, made the move left, if he, uh, like you, but, oh, uh -oh. can't do that. Dom misses the 10 pin. Dom now with a 185 max. DJ with a 181 max. DJ can step up here and throw a double. He can make Dom think about his ninth and 10th frame. That's a really good shot out of DJ. Ooh, look at DJ. He ain't dancing yet. This man's known for dancing. That was a shot I might have danced on. Look at this. After going 7-10 over here and then 10-pin, he gets that ball to face up flush perfectly. It's game on right now for DJ Archer. So as you can see, Archer can finish with 181. Dom Barrett can max out at 195. Foundation frame here in the ninth. If DJ can strike here, he's going to give himself a shot here. Got the light oh, hit. Got the light swisher. <clears throat> it's an old fashioned grind out here in the semifinal match. Dom going to take a re rack here on the right lane. Take a look at this one again. DJ with the hop. Oh, he was stuck a little bit there. Yeah, interesting. You can take a look. That's a bad rack on six. Dom not taking this for time. You can see how the one twos squeezed just a little bit there. He's taking a look at this one. So again, Archer can max at 181. Dom going at 175 pace, can max at 195. On the right lane, his good lane. Oh, ho. and Dom almost seven tens. All right, so Dom needs to convert this here. He can still bowl 185 with a spare. He did just miss a 10 pin on the left lane. Does that play with your head a little bit, Tom? Uh, you know, I've always said that when you miss one, the bowling gods make you shoot one the next frame. Uh, player of Dom's caliber. I don't see any way he misses two in a row. And he Applau claps for himself. Applauds for himself as he <laughs> yeah. makes the 10 pin. Now, Dom yet to strike here on this left lane. Adding a little drink of water to his pre-shot routine here. Yeah, and if he does not strike here, DJ can step up and win this match. If if you miss the position round here, this is this is kind of what we saw in the position round. Low scoring to see who can advance, who can make it to the show. Right now, we're looking to see who can make it to the title match. Dom Barrett, left lane. That looks pretty good. Oh. This ball's just going just a little bit too far down lane, not getting up high enough into the pocket. So with that miss, DJ Archer will have the opportunity to step up here and throw a double in the 10th frame and win this match. Dom, three 10 pins in a row, converts two of them. Again, Archer can get to 181. Important for Dom to get decent count here.
Needs to get at least seven. There we go. And How of course, that? that one strikes. All right, final score for Dom, 174. DJ Archer needs a double. And four pins. The double the hard part there. There's the oh, first there's one. The first one. Woo! That is not easy to do right now. That is not easy to do at all. DJ making the proper adjustments on the right lane. Trusting that ball. Just right of the down lane rangefinder. Well, can opener. Yeah. <laughs> can opener action through the pins. He needs another one right here. Probably needs to look at this rack. Maybe give it a double take. Let's see. All right. He likes it. And he gave it a lot of loft. Pretty good shot. Oh, oh and it my goodness. Tips off the end of the pattern but leaves the wow. seven. <sighs> wow. Wow. You can see the agony and defeat in his face. Let's look at this shot one more time. I don't think he could have thrown it really any better than this. He I stuck it. Yeah, I don't think he can throw his last six shots any better than he did. DJ Archer comes home third here tonight in Shawnee. Taking home $12,000 for his efforts this week. Great week, DJ. Final score, 174, Dom Barrett, 170, DJ Archer. Who says it has to be high scoring to be exciting? So we got we got Dom versus EJ coming up here, Tom, and we had a low scoring match there. You know, EJ averaging 240 here. When the lanes got really tough for everybody else, they, they were still very playable for EJ Tackett. Is this EJ Tackett's night? I... I've got to give the advantage to EJ. As you said, you know, we saw guys bowling 250, then 140, and then 220, and then 180. EJ pretty much all day long was just 240, 240, 240, 240, 240. Seemed like every time we looked up, he had a seven bagger. You know, EJ last year really struggled on television and championship round appearances. This year he opens up with the U.S. Open. He wins at Woodland, Royal Penn Woodland, completes the Triple Crown. Last week did not have a good week at all on the short oil pattern in Springfield. Finished near the bottom of the pack. Comes back in here and dominates. Can he go two for two as the top seed this week? And he would have a great start to this season with two wins. He had 16 titles in his 20s. He just turned 30. This would be his second title already as a 30-year-old. We talked to him at the U.S. Open here in the booth. He spent a lot of time with this, which we greatly appreciate, the access to the players and EJ. He said he studied the PBA Tour careers over the years of some of the greatest ever to play. He said Barnes and Duke won most of their titles in their 30s. And it's unbelievable to think this young man is already at 17 titles with three majors. Yeah, yeah, we were talking it uh, earlier today. Would you put him, he's got 16 titles before he was 30, got 17 now. Yeah. Might get 18 and, tonight. <laughs> yeah. Would he double that in his 30s because uh, most guys do it in their 30s? Maybe that's why I didn't do anything because I didn't win my first one until I was 41. I guess that's I it. I waited too long. Why didn't you tell me 10 years earlier I needed to win, Mike? 
Yeah, I don't think we knew each other back then, Tom, but I'll tell you what, I think you'll take what you've been able to parlay into your career here into your 50s, man. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the PBA 50 Tour has treated me well. Speaking of which, the PBA 50 Tour will be right here on Bowl TV all summer. Yeah, a little bit of a change around for our schedule. We normally start in April. Uh, down in Florida this year, we're going to start in June in Las Vegas and end in August down in Florida. So looking forward to that. For all information regarding the PBA and PBA 50 tours, as well as regionals, you can head over to pba.com. Saw EJ get a handful of that one. That was another tester shot, it looked like, and that one hooked, hooked high on him on the left lane. You know, Dom Barrett, if he's going to win this title here tonight, he's going to have to figure out a way to carry on these lanes. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. 174 isn't going to beat EJ. No, it's not. No. Dom was in the pocket quite often other than the, the one bad shot, but he's going to he's gonna need to do something to get his ball to go through the pins a little bit better. I don't know if it's a ball change, if it's a speed change, uh, if it's a loft change. You know, when, when DJ made that ball change in the sixth frame, he hit the pocket every shot as well. A 110 pin and two seven pins, the, the second one costing him the match. So I think Dom needs to get his ball to hook up just a little bit sooner to get it to go through the pins a little bit better. Dom's been practicing at will over on lanes 15 and 16. He's throwing a lot of different bowling balls down the lane. He's also practicing his 10 pin. Yeah, as I was talking to EJ uh, in that short break, ask him one of the keys to his success. And uh, he said it's the scouting of the pairs. They keep a journal, him and Brett. Every time they've been here, uh, they chart the pairs, they chart the changes. And then he also felt that the 41-foot bear pattern that they're bowling on played for EJ very similar to pattern four at the U.S. Open which was also a 41-foot pattern, but was flat. Uh, EJ said he was able to pretty much do what he did at the U.S. Open here this week in Oklahoma. So if he gets to do what he did on the show, Dom's got a long road ahead of him to get this title. Here, you're getting a good look at Brett Spangler. Brett's the uh, tour rep for Motive. Here we go. 27 titles combined between these two players that are under the age of 40. Dom, of course, 37. We've been talking about EJ being 30 years old. The man in black here tonight. Yeah, the two guys you would have picked if you went just on experience starting today. EJ's going to finish on the right lane. And that's a smart move because when we watched practice, that was the lane he struggled on a little bit, the left lane. But uh, no problem there in the first frame. EJ's going to be a handful for Dom here. Yeah, the other thing he's doing is Dom did not throw a single strike on the left lane. So it could be a double benefit for EJ. EJ liking the left lane and Dom not as much. Oh. oh, Dom Barrett, pretty good shot. I think he uh, he did just what I suggested, got that ball to hook up just a little bit earlier. 
and uh, got it to go through the pins a little bit better, but left a four pin. Dom just needs to move just a bit left there off of that, but a pretty good shot to start the match. Dom made the switch from the one remix there to the Black Widow 2.0 hybrid. See what Dom can do here on the left lane. Light swisher there. Dom's first strike on the left lane, that's got to give him a little bit of confidence. As we watched in practice, EJ had this lane figured out. Let's see if he can get off to Great start here with a double. Up quickly, right swisher. Look at that look on his face. EJ looks very confident, very comfortable. EJ is throwing the venom shock from Motive. Would have been really cool for Zach to make it and have EJ and Zach both on this telecast, Zach had a great week. Ended up finishing in sixth. EJ Tackett. EJ doing what he's been doing all day long. Seems like every time we looked up, EJ had a seven bagger. He's off to a great start here at this championship match with the front three. We'll see if Dom can get a strike here on the right lane. Keep this a 10 pin match. Oh. Didn't get that one far enough to the right through the face, leaves the 3-6-10. I'd hate to second guess a triple crown winner, but I wonder if Dom shouldn't go back to throwing the one on the right lane and keep throwing the Black Widow on the left lane. He's moved in further left. He's laying that ball down now at about the 24th board. It's a great shot right there. Yeah, he's, uh, he's moved in quite a bit here. He's in EJ's line. Get a great look at this right here. That's right over about 26, right over the down lane range finder, which is on the 10 board, and uh, high flush 10 back. EJ for the front four. Great shot. Boy, EJ is rolling here tonight, and that's exactly what we've seen throughout this entire week. Yeah, look at that look of determination on that young man's face. I'm sure there's a bunch of people watching back at EZ Bowl in Bluffton, Indiana. I'm sure Natalie's watching at home. The key to EJ in championship rounds is, is the first few frames. If he can get off to a good start, it's lights out. And he's done that here. Just as I say that, three, six, seven. We've seen EJ pick.
pick up a lot of splits this week as well. Yeah, he gave the uh, the old gesture that he got his elbow out around on that one. Made it hook a little bit sooner. Might be a huge break getting that four down late. Makes this spur quite a bit easier to make. Oh, I think he thought he made it. Look at, oh, that was so close. So now if Dom can step up here and throw a double, Dom takes the lead in the match. that one. Oh, and another 7-10. We've seen three of them on the right lane now. And you can see Dom's frustration there. He really liked that off his hand. I thought that was a really good shot. All right, halfway through our title match. EJ Tackett with a 27 pin lead, both bowlers on opens. No. Okay. Dom, okay, Dom didn't like it off his hand, but he still hit the pocket. He did not deserve back-to-back 7-10s -back there by any means. No, he did not. He definitely stood up like he missed that one right, uh, but maybe he's got a little bit more room on that lane. That one definitely made it back to the pocket and uh, certainly could have struck. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good sign, but uh, getting late in the match here. Dom's going to need to get a couple breaks going here, and right now he's not having any breaks whatsoever. Let's see how EJ handles that uh, bad shot. See if he can wash it away, get up here, get back to doing what he's been doing all day. So Laney does like more. Oh, doesn't like that one. Oh. EJ leaves the 4-6, can just gets the 6, so now scoreboard tells the story here. Going to be a 16-pin lead for EJ. Just shows these things, man, it's tough to win one of these things. EJ, 545-pin lead. Now he's got a 16-pin lead with four frames to bowl. He likes that one. Much better shot from Tackett there now. Nice adjustment. Crossing around 22-23. Out to about eight. All right, can Dom figure out this right lane? How about all 10 Likes here? It. There you go, Good Dom. Shot. No 7-10 on that one. Nope. Through seven frames now, 16-pin match. 
advantage, attack it. Been really good on this lane. There's the double. So Dom Kamax at 226, EJ at 242, if both players were to strike out. That's Dom's first double on the championship pair tonight. Took him 18 frames to throw a double. But that one was really good. And he's going to get to finish on that lane. EJ likes it. What an answer. Big double for EJ. This ninth frame is huge for EJ. EJ throws a strike here. Cannot be shut out no matter what Dom Barrett does in the ninth and tenth. Likes it. EJ got it going on right now. Just those two little mix mishaps there in the middle of this game. Otherwise, he's been perfect. Throwing it very confidently. Max score for EJ Tackett, 242. Dom Barrett, 226. We've talked about the rack there on the right lane. Dom taking a re-rack as we... Take a look at EJ's last shot. Look at that. Push the nine off the back of the lane. Couple of deep breaths. What an exciting match between two triple crown winners. Dom likes it. Staying alive, Dom Barrett's got matched up on this pair now. Yep. He looks really comfortable now. He's been around the pocket most of the game. Yeah, this game has been well bowled. He's only missed one time on this left lane. Has to double to make EJ throw the first one. He likes it. Oh, wow. Oh, huge, huge break. As you can see, Tom Sticky's right hand out almost looked like he was almost apologizing to EJ. Ball just never gets far enough to nope. the right. Reads the friction, goes Brooklyn, catches the break. Still alive. You see Part of Olin. Gives him back the bad break on the 7 10. Gave that one plenty of room. Is it going to hook? Yep. Gets the oh, light hit. Woo! Dom Barrett. He's going to be in the 220s now. Just when you think Dom didn't have any chance in this match. Comes back, parlays a break. 
<laughs> Six pins on this shot. Forces a double out of EJ Tackett. What a finish by Dom Barrett. So EJ can get to two, 242. So EJ needs the first hit. It would put him in the 230s. Got to have it. And there's a strike three, there Jay is. Tackett. Now, he is going to need some count here. Huge shot right there. Saw EJ just looked over and said, I need eight. Take a look at this shot here. About the 20th board. And there it is. Yeah, that's the hit that we've seen three seven tens. Hard and straight, straight the down middle. the middle, and EJ Tackett, Tackett is a two-time champion this year on this tour. He's won two out of three events. Title number 18 right here for EJ Tackett here in Shawnee. Yeah, what a great uh, display by Dom Barrett. Finishing with the last six strikes to force EJ to throw the first strike in the 10th. Congratulations, EJ. Final score, 231, 226, EJ Tackett, your champion. Stick around, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have a quick interview with the winner. Mike Flanagan will come out and do a quick interview with EJ. Congratulations to him. Well deserved. There you go. Getting a good look at e champion EJ Tackett. What a great finish that was. Great show of sportsmanship. Thanks to Chris and the gang here. Dino Castillo and Dom Barrett. There's a good look at Chris Skillings, proprietor here at Fire Lake Lanes. Thank you, Chris, for everything you've done for us this week. Mike's going to head out, do a nice uh, interview with EJ. Here's a look at the winning shot, hard and straight, right at the head pin. Took any possibility of a bad count out of play. Congratulations, EJ Tackett. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put your hands together one more time for Dominic Barrett. I'll just come up to you here, EJ. EJ Tackett has now won two titles at the age of 30 in three weeks. Let's give it up for EJ one more time. <laughs> EJ, you led this tournament by over 500 pins in this one right here. And bowling for the title, having to bowl one more match isn't easy. And Dom gave you all you could handle. How does it feel to be a two-time champion this year and get title number 18? Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty incredible. Um, you know, I was I was on a really big high after the U.S. Open. I think it showed the first block in, in Springfield, but um, I, I bowled well at the end, and that actually gave me a lot of confidence coming into this week. Kind of got the the jitters out from the from the U.S. Open, and I was able to show up this week and just you know get back to, to normal bowling. And uh, it, it's it's kind of weird that both matches that I've I've won this year have come down to exactly the same thing that. I think I needed strike an eight in both of them to to secure a title. So, be able to do it both times is uh, is awesome. You know, just throwing good shots when you need it is is always good. But to uh, have the pins fall my way is even better. Yeah, we know last year you had some issues in championship rounds, but this year you're perfect thus far as the top seed. It's got to feel good. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it never feels bad winning. <laughs> but uh, you know. <laughs> um, Looking forward to uh, Wichita now. 
Yeah, you've got uh, an early lead on player of the year, a little early to be thinking about that, but that would be your second player of the year. I know you've got a lot of people that support you. You've got a lot of fans at home that are watching on Bull TV. I know Brett's been your man by your side. Who are the people you'd like to thank? Um, obviously, all my family, my wife, uh, my brother that's here. Um, he bowled great this week. I'm so proud of him. He did great. Um, all my sponsors, Motive, Dexter, Turbo. Let's see. Let's go down the list. Uh, CTD. <laughs> Uh, Genesis, we got Tony Stewart, Alan Samuels, uh, Boron, Bowler X. I think that's it. <laughs> For now. We might have a new one next week, but we'll see. All right, well, I'm sure you'll take another one. Uh, what would you like to say about the folks here in Oklahoma? You've had a lot of success here. Yeah, I've bowled here, uh, I bowled great here for, for quite a, a few years. I won the TSC here, so this is my second title here. Uh, kind of in this building, we bowled in the arena, but um, it's always a warm, thank you, Dino, I love you too, buddy. Uh, it's always a very warm welcome when we come to, to Shawnee, and the people are great, you know, this is a, it's a small town feel, which I love, because that's, that's where I'm from too, so I, I thoroughly enjoy uh, everyone that comes out, because they, they're, they're my people, you know, as, as we, you could say, so um, I want to thank Chris for bringing us out again, and uh, all the staff here at Fire Lake. Awesome. EJ Tackett, two-time winner this year, 18 titles on the PBA Tour, and he's only 30 years old. Congratulations, EJ.